Today we're taking a look at this build your own six key programmable keyboard kit that just arrived on Kickstarter and it was funded in just two days. I'm Kyle and you're watching TechSquid TV. The Painless Prototyping BYO Keyboard by Travis the Maker, a do-it-yourself soldering and programming kit for beginners to create your own six key keyboard. With this we can create our own media playback controller, game macro pad, or maybe some kind of stream deck device. I caught wind of this project just before it went live on Kickstarter, and so I reached out to Travis so I could share this with you, so thank you Travis for providing us with this preview kit early. For just $35, this kit promises to provide you with not just a kit for building your own keyboard, but also written, live, and recorded tutorials to go with it, as well as demo code for both C++ Arduino-based development and Python for CircuitPython. And more on that in just a moment. Let's take a look at what comes with our kit, and do remember this is a preview and could potentially change before it goes live. When first opening up, the first thing you'll see is obviously a QR code, which will take you directly to the documentation and tutorials. Inside, you'll find a micro USB cable and a bag of everything we'll need, except for the tools you'll need beforehand, like a soldering iron and solder, of course, as well as a pair of snippers. And of course, that all important included tech swag sticker. The main feature of this kit is the very beautiful PCB that comes in both black and white and reminds you to keep making at the end. The board is pretty minimal in design and the screen printing looks excellent, which will make it easier for us when we get started. The mechanical switches that come with this kit are Gateron brand, a popular alternative to the well-known Cherry MX switches. The Kickstarter listing mentions that red switches will come with the kit, though they may offer multiple options when they go live. In our preview kit, we have these Gateron brown switches. And of course, for those switches, we have our keycaps and these diodes. I'll leave all of the deeper technical learning to those picking up the kit, but those diodes are crucial in making up the matrix, as it's called, of the switches so that we can use the minimal amount of pins on our microcontroller to access each of these. Speaking of, the brains of our keyboard will come from the included Adafruit Itsy Bitsy M0 Express. This is a cheap and small microcontroller powered with a 32-bit ARM Cortex-M0 core. If you are familiar with C++ and Arduino, this behaves much the same, but is actually powerful enough to run CircuitPython as well. It's completely up to you. Let's get started building the keyboard. If you want to skip around, you can use the chapters below the video. I decided to start with the easiest part as I am myself a beginner. I've soldered quite a few things in the past, but I don't get much practice. We have these six diodes we need to install, one for each of our switches. We'll bend the leads at both ends of our diode at 90 degrees to form these compact U shapes. When we have our diodes prepped, we can start inserting them into the PCB. You'll see printed on the PCB an icon showing the diode with a stripe on one side that matches up to the black side of our diodes. After you insert the leads fully, flip the board over and bend the leads outward just a little bit to keep the diode locked in place and to make it easier to solder in just a moment. Next, we'll break out the soldering iron and embarrass myself on YouTube. Luckily, this is a beginner's kit. Don't worry though, as I did, if you don't nail it right away, you can always go back and touch it up. For those that are brand new to soldering, what we are doing is pressing the hot iron tip against both the metal pad on the PCB and the lead coming through the hole. After a moment, we can introduce some solder to the joint and it will melt and flow around the metal pad. If you've done it just right, the solder should resemble a cone or a tent. And when we're done, we can bend the leads back up and just clip off any excess. Staying in the same area, but in no particular order, we'll add the IO headers that our Adafruit board will soon sit in. The best way to install these is to flip the board over so that the flat top of the IO headers are resting against the flat surface of the table. And this extra set of hands, though maybe overkill, is a really handy thing to have to keep everything still. I have a tendency to use too little solder at first. If you do as well, just place the iron back on the area and you'll notice that the solder will reliquify and flow around again. And at that point, you can just add more solder. The last pieces getting soldered to the PCB are our mechanical keyboard switches. These will press fit nicely directly on the PCB and then we can flip it over and just finish our soldering. Once 
Once we finished up soldering our switches, we can add our keycaps and we finished the board. That only leaves adding the IO pins to our Adafruit Itsy Bitsy board. I left this to the end because it's the smallest and therefore the easiest to mess up, though if we do mess up, you can often recover. The Itsy Bitsy comes with these standard IO pins, which you can snap to the appropriate length. For this particular build, we won't actually need the back row of pins, but you'll see me add them anyway because I stupidly clipped both of my IO pins one pin too short on each side. Not a problem though, I just used the third set of IO pins to run along the back side of the board, and that filled in the two that I missed on either side. Once done soldering, we can snap our itsy bitsy on our board and we are truly done with all of the hardware. The Kickstarter mentions some case designs will be available for both laser cutting and 3D printing, and Travis was quick to send over an STL file for me so that I could print my own. Thankfully, I have an awesome downstairs neighbor with a brand new 3D printer who was able to print this off for me. The board comes with M2 size machine screw holes at the corners of the board. And with some finesse, we can use a lighter to heat up our Allen wrench and fix the holes in our 3D printed case. We can then gently force everything together before fumbling around with tiny nuts. That can't stay in there. So let's talk about programming. The board selected here is the Itsy Bitsy M0 Express, which supports both C++ development on the Arduino IDE or Python via CircuitPython and the Mu editor. On the public GitHub repo for this project are several example programs for both Arduino and Python. Both options are fairly straightforward and there is already a ton of information provided by Adafruit directly on how to set up each. I've loaded up the media key example so that I can control volume, skip forward and back, and play and pause music. W what's that? What? demonetized immediately. I think this is a great project, especially for someone who's just getting started in this kind of thing. It would make an excellent gift for someone maybe in middle school or high school. And for $35, for not just the hardware, but the training materials included, I think it's an absolute steal and you can see why it was funded so fast on Kickstarter. If you're watching this video right as it came out, you still have about two weeks to get in on the Kickstarter. I'm also sure that these will be available on painlessprototyping.com after the Kickstarter ends. So let me know what you thought about this video. It's just a little bit different from what we usually talk about around here, but I'd love to explore the world of programmable hardware with y'all more. So please leave a comment below and let me know what you think while I come up with new uses for this guy. Probably key bindings for Sea of Thieves.